but you can't separate it anymore. It's so invasive. I mean, you know, they're shutting down churches and uh, Pastor Che on was so um, bold to come and, uh, you know, get that canceled over California. But somebody's mm -hmm. got to stand up. Wow. You can't just be, uh, yeah. you know, Jesus would have turned over the tables a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <I was> just <laughs> Hello, friends. I'm Brenda Crouch. I believe the winds of global change compel us to the mysteries that speak to path and purpose. In a time of amplified chaos, there is a divine compass to navigate the conditions that drive our everyday decisions. For the next 30 minutes, we'll explore stories and the knowledge of sojourners who will point the way to the secrets that lie before us. Join the conversation and welcome to Inside Voice. Hi, friends, and welcome to Inside Voice. You know, in a culture of consumer-driven values and celebrity dreams, it's often difficult to stay grounded in what's real, what's true, and sustainable. Well, my guest today knows what it is to have joy, whether abased in obscurity or abounding in success. She has seen past the mirage of Hollywood and maintains a heartfelt love for people behind the images. And she's also passionate for women who have been marginalized, abused, or misused to find their true identity in the one who brings beauty to their ashes. My friend Mary Hudson and her husband Keith have been in ministry for 42 years. The Lord gave Mary a prophetic word 16 years ago that she would raise up women to be bold trailblazers and think outside the box. Since then, she's been holding over 60 women's conferences in the U.S. and abroad. In the past five years, Arise has held four annual conferences and sponsored 40 women out of domestic violence and clean and sober living shelters with remarkable testimonies of how their lives have been transformed. This is near and dear to my heart, and so are you, my friend. Mary, thank you for being with me today. Oh, thank you, Brenda. You're so sweet. We love helping uh, marginalized women, women coming out of shelters and domestic violence. It just amazes us what the Word of God will do to transform somebody's life to go from a victim to a victor. And, you yeah. know, we do three conferences in Hawaii every year in one conference in California. And uh, we take 40 women at each conference out of a shelter. And then we track their... Um, testimonies after that to see their stories because it's just amazing mm. what God does. Wow. Yeah. Well, as you know, that subject is very near and dear to my heart because God delivered me out of a lot of abuse. Um, I suffered domestic violence and I suffered childhood sexual abuse and all those things that led to the mindsets that actually keep you trapped. So I think what you're doing is you're really addressing um, both the spiritual aspects as well as the mindset aspects of identity. Uh, is that correct? Can you expand oh, on that yeah. a little bit? Yeah. No, we get, um, you know, we're doing the, our next conference is in Kauai in uh, March 24th through the 26th. And Tracy Strawberry, Daryl Strawberry's wife, who teaches nice. so eloquently on yes, uh, she does. transformation and uh, how to, you know, go from victimhood to victorhood. And she just snaps her fingers and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Tracy, you got it going on. And she does. And, but you yeah. see, what's so exciting is that you see these women change right before your eyes. Like we had one mm. girl who was in a, uh, she was a drug mule taking cocaine from uh, Columbia to Co Kona, Hawaii, in the big island. She was uh, left to uh, live in a guava hut and deliver the drugs at night. And uh, she lost all mm. three of her children. I mean, she was one miserable lady. And finally one night she she escaped across the taro fields into the domestic violence home there, the shelter in Kona. And we just happened to be there that week and we happened to go in there. You know, there's no wow. happenstance with God. It's all prearranged. And yeah. uh, we prayed for her. She was one unhappy mm -hmm. camper, but we prayed for her. And she came to the conference and ended up giving her heart to the Lord. Although my friend, Adriana Carrillo, who is sort of my diamond girl mother, she takes these ladies into the swimming pool at the hotels and gets them baptized. She uh, almost, uh, you know, had a situation where she wasn't going to get baptized and she was getting mad and angry. 
and she just took authority over it and the girl got baptized her whole life changed she went over to honolulu she joined ywam she enrolled in the university of hawaii and she's going to become a sociologist she got all three of her children wow I mean, God just flipped her around because of a two and a half day weekend telling her who she is in Christ. I mean, you might Incredible. be all sorts of things in your life, in your history, in your past, but you're a new creature in Christ and all things have passed away. And Brenda, I really feel that this is a year, that 2022 is a year to live in the moment. And whatever mm -hmm. God presents to you in that moment, you've got to go with it. You've got to flow with it. I was so funny. Ooh, that's good. I was in... Uh, Terry Seville Foy's next conference up there in Rockwall, Texas, and she's just tearing it up, and we're having a great time at the <laughs> end. We've got a lot of people filled with the spirit. There's probably about seven, 800 people there. And um, one of my <clears throat> friends was there. Actually, she's my graphic artist, and she just moved to Dallas from Orange County. And, um, you know, we paid for her to come up and everything like that. But then when I was talking to her right before I left, it was like I was in my purse and it was one of those small purses where you can't get your wallet in. So you're carrying your cash just loose. And this $50 <laughs> bill just jumps out of my purse and falls on the floor. And God says, just give that to her. Well, I didn't do it right away. I stuffed it back in my purse. And then God's all over <laughs> me saying, give it to her. And as and finally, I, I yank it out of my purse and she's so thankful. She's so grateful. Uh, you know, that, you know, it's, it's, she's just getting established and she's with a pastor there and everything like that. Uh, yeah. $50 means a lot to her. So that was really awesome. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's awesome. You know, I love that you have a heart that is sensitive to the Holy spirit and you listen to him, uh, ever since I've known you and it's been a few years, I've known you to be the kind of woman that wants to, uh, speak encouragement into other women and to see them thrive, to see them reach their fullest potential for what they were created to do. And I love the story of the woman that uh, came to you and was in such a desperate place and how her life has changed. Uh, are there any other stories where maybe women have come through your program several times or they've, uh, they've gone on to even become a, maybe a part of your ministry? Well, actually, uh, <clears throat> There is a girl from the Dream Center in Los Angeles that I keep bringing her because uh, she's such a testimony. And she every time she comes, it's, you know, like going from glory to glory. But then I do have another lady that uh, we had um, in Kona. And she was at the same domestic violence shelter a couple of years before. And she was one unhappy camper. I mean, she had been thrown out of the car mm -hmm. at 60 miles an hour by her uh, insignificant, I'm not going to say significant, but insignificant yeah. mother, I mean, serious domestic violence. And she was mad at God. She was mad at the world. She was mad at anybody that even came near. Her. So the mm -hmm. three of us were there and we were praying for the ladies in the room. And finally we uh, decided, well, we're just going to take a chance here. We're going to lay hands on her and pray for her. Yeah, man. So, uh, you know, we, we didn't know whether she was going to snap at us, but um, she had something like 15 bones broken down the side of her shoulder from being thrown wow. out at that uh, rate of speed. And um, it was amazing. She came to the conference. She sat there. She looked disheveled. She looked unhappy and miserable. But, you know, the power of the word of God will just go in there and mm -hmm. change you. It's um it, you know, I have my book, Smart Bombs, Tearing Down Strongholds with the Explosive Word of God. It explodes inside of you when it's a rhema word for you, when the Holy yeah. Spirit's speaking to you personally, and he's trying to tell you something, which is why it's so important to get into your word on a daily basis. Anyways, those words got into her and in those two, and we start on a Thursday night, we end on Tuesday uh, Saturday at noon, you know, we pay for all the girls' expenses. We bless them and give them whatever we can to help them. Um, she came back two years later and gave us this testimony. She didn't even look like the same person. She was totally, wow. uh, hair was done beautifully, wearing a beige suit. She looked like somebody just stepped out of Forbes magazine. She was amazing. And she had moved mm. from Kona over to Hilo and she'd gotten a job there and uh, 
she as she was walking home from work, she saw some people holding hands on top of a grassy knoll and they were Christians and they were praying. And she went up there and broke the, uh, uh, you know, came and joined them and started praying with them. Wow. Joined the church. Her whole life changed. And um, mm-hmm. she's just a testimony to the glory of God. Wow. Praise God. I mean, yeah. just to see how uh, the Lord takes notice of the details. He's in the details and how he will guide our steps and lead us, you know, to people like you or the people on the grassy knoll who were praying. That's what he does. Uh, he's so faithful to yeah. uh, to heal the broken and the oppressed yeah, and to bring right. them out, deliver right. them. Yeah. Joy I love that. Strength. I love that. And, you know, healing really is a process, but I think that that epiphany that you were talking about, that rhema word, that life-giving word is what, that's where the paradigm shift is. That's where, you know, suddenly you're seeing yourself through new eyes because I understand that thing where you're angry or you're so hurt, you're betrayed, or you're, you know, you've got the cloak of shame on you and you can't see anything but that and that the enemy's lies can be very strong to somebody who's feels so beat down but uh what god does through his word to redeem and to restore that and bring you out of those lies and into the light i love that love 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 that yeah Um, it really does that's actually how it started for me i was a radio news director in las vegas in the uh late 70s early 80s yeah and I went, I got saved and I went to a church that, uh, you know, uh, I couldn't figure out why a lady in the church had cancer. And one of the elders told me that she said, well, maybe God's trying to teach her something. And I'm like, oh, I want to serve a God that wanted to teach me. Right. Her. I'm out. Yeah. of here. So I promptly yeah, got come on. about 18 months and <laughs> as I was going on my way. Uh, you know, I'd get up at three 30 in the morning. I'd be on there for CBS and then I'd move to ABC. And, um, it was, uh, you know, quite a job you had to be real strong and, uh, you had to, uh, be very, like you are very, uh, eloquent. And, uh, if you missed a few words, it was a, not a good thing. And my, um, uh, uh, radio manager did not like me because I was into getting everybody that moved saved. And he would come and try to mess me up, try to upset me. But I would um, call my, the associate pastor at this little church I started going to afterwards and say, Jan, what do I do now? She said, open the Bible, Mary. Just read the word. And whatever God pops out to you, he's going to comfort you with. And, you know, mm-hmm. I did that at 10 minutes to the hour. And, you know, if I came up on the hour, like at broadcast, and I was like wavering and everything like that, mm-hmm. my job was... Uh, almost over. So I would read the word 10 minutes to the hour. And, you know, he tried to upset me about 15 minutes to the hour and I was in tears. Uh-huh. He would call, I would <laughs> calm down. God would speak to me. The Holy Spirit would talk to me and uh, I'd get on the air and I'd be strong and bold and courageous. Mm, because in him, we live and breathe and move. Oh, yeah. I mean, we have our being there in him. Go. So that's that's quite a drink of water, a <laughs> breath of fresh air yes. to be able to do that. I love that. That's a great yeah. little tip for anybody, honestly. Yeah. So that's right. I remember you guys lived in Vegas. And that is that where you were actually saved, you and Keith? You uh, know, yes, I'm from Nevada originally. Earlier, yeah. And then uh, um, after I finished uh, backsliding, I ran into one of my friends who was running the public TV station because I was doing public TV documentaries on things like life after death and things like that. And uh, uh, he looked so happy with his girlfriend. And uh, I said, why are you so happy? Because I couldn't figure out why Christians smiled so much. He said, well, I can (laughs) afford again. And I said, well, Mitch, I I used to be one of those. And he said, well, I wish Uh, you told me. I almost tried to commit suicide. I'm going, oh. (gasps) Wow. So he said, well, listen, Mary, you've got to come over to this little church, North Las Vegas with us, this little lady from Oklahoma, Bertie McCoy. And uh, you need to hear hear the associate pastor preach because she was an ex showgirl that um, uh, got saved and her brother got her saved. Her brother now is my husband for 42 years. 
And, um, oh. and she became the <laughs> associate pastor of five years, but she could teach the word like People Magazine. Mm-hmm. So she mm-hmm. really taught us the word, but it was, uh, that's where the word really got inside of me. I could tell it was the Holy Spirit talking to you through the word of God. And that's why it's so important to um, get in the word, because that's how the Holy Spirit wants to direct you. And when you're lost for words, Amen. lost for anything, just open up that little Bible and let him speak to you. Oh, man, that's good. That well, is the it's truth. really interesting, just as a, a little tidbit, uh, Brenda, uh, my daughter Katie is doing a um, two-year residency in Las Vegas in the Resorts World Hotel, and the Resorts mm. World Hotel was built on the ashes of the Stardust Hotel, where her aunt, yeah. Jan, the preacher, was the top showgirl. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. That gives yeah. me the chill bumps. Yeah. <laughs> So I know she's up in heaven just, you know, directing the whole thing. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Well, we're going to have to talk to you about seeing one of those shows. That'd be fun. Um, So I want to talk about France because I know you spent some time in France and you were uh, you you said the Lord really spoke to you about going to France and and just spreading the gospel there. And you were there for, what, two years and well, no, I, I go don't... off and on and hold conferences there. And my friends, okay. John and Laura Madden, have had a church there in Nice for probably 40 years now. And their their yeah. daughter's taken it over, her husband. And they've established uh, Rhema Bible Training Centers in Geneva, Paris, uh, Germany, and um, Canada, and Haiti. So we would do... Wow lot as much as we could there but they didn't allow women to speak in france and so yeah, I, that's I where i was speak. going <laughs> yeah yeah that's, so that's too bad talking. i'm speaking now too and bad. <laughs> Perry seville yeah. did the same thing so she's got oh, wow uh, i've got my books in french and she's got her books in french yeah amazing well god will open the doors where there seems to be no way he certainly does make a way and do you think that women have been marginalized through misinterpretations of scriptures? Have they been, have their mouths been uh, oh, absolutely. quieted? Absolutely. But, but look at what God's doing. I think right now he's opening the mouths of women. Uh, let's talk about that a little bit. What, and I think you're preparing these women who have been shut down. They've had a bullseye on their back where the enemy's tried to take them out through abuse, through lies, whatever. And look what God's doing through the restoration process. He's opening the mouths of, you know, of the Marys and the, you know, these women who fall in love with Jesus. And I think they've got something to say to the church right now and to the world who really does not know the the true representation of who Jesus is. Would you agree no, with that? I don't. I mean, Jesus always had women. She, he had women, disciples, apostles, and all kinds of women around him. I mean, um, uh, we really love the our, our friend from uh, uh, Charisma, Lee Grady, who's written so many books about mm-hmm. women in ministry, and he has such a heart for women who have been um, marginalized, like you say. And he goes through each woman in the New Testament and their their position and how important they were to uh, his crew. And and you know you get into there where Paul's saying you know women should not speak in the church. Well, the women he was talking about, women in Corinthians, I mean, they were new believers and they were used to sitting in these um, uh, temples, these, uh, you know, where they all talked and they all yelled and screamed. So when they came into a church where they needed to be quiet, they needed to be toned down. (laughs) Yeah. It wasn't that they weren't supposed to speak ever because Mm -hmm. he had women around him. So it's yeah. just misinterpretation and sort of a put down on women. I mean, you yes. think of Joyce Meyer as the second largest ministry in the world. And then, mm-hmm. you know, you've got a great ministry. Terry Seville Foy's got a great ministry. There's so many women ministers that have a great voice out there. I like mm-hmm. to do prophetic. I like to um, minister in that area. And uh, there's lots of prophetic women out there. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I think the Lord is really the, the, in this era we've had, we've gone through a lot of things culturally and socially, and it's as if the shaking that we're feeling is actually uh, freeing some people and awakening some people to um, the, the value of women and their voice. We have a voice and it's, 
uh, I think it's going to be a powerful tool in the days to come. So I so appreciate what you're doing. What do you see ahead for 2022? You talked about being in the moment. Uh, no, I, I explain I, I, that. Really resonating when I was listening to a, a friend of ours, Mario Murillo, last night on Flashpoint, and he was mm-hmm. saying how the hippie movement, which I went, I was in Berkeley in the hippie movement in the '68 to '70, is so funny. And um, we used to see Mario Savio have those uh, re- uh, street revivals, but Mario Murillo was there at the same time, having a revival right there, down the street. Love of- Mario, and uh, you know he has that one story where he confronted the warlock. And uh, mm-hmm. it's uh, what he was saying last night is that there was a, a warlock in one of his meetings that got saved recently. I think it was even this month. And the very next day, the guy was out on the streets getting people saved and born again. But um, yeah. what he was saying that really resonated was that the first, uh, you know, real revival he's, he's lived in was in uh, Berkeley. But it was, like you know, like flowers and daisies. And it was uh, more of a lamb's revival. But what we're experiencing and we're starting to experience in 22 is the lions are rising up. Lions are going to speak out. People are not going to be afraid of anything. People, you think about the uh, right now, they say they have 50,000 truckers in Canada who formed a convoy going along the uh, 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 border of Canada, the United States because they're not allowed to go in without a COVID vaccination. So they have really organized and uh, people are cheering them on, standing on the side of the road, handing them food, doing whatever it takes, just cheering these people on for standing up. People are not, you know, they're tired of being put down. And this is all leading to a great revival. God's going to, they're going to realize that Jesus is the answer. The only way out is uh, Jesus Christ. And that's what we're going to be looking for. And we're already seeing it, I think. Amen. Only in January. Amen. Amen. I agree. And I think people, you know, in this time of shaking, I think God is really bringing people to a place of acknowledging some of the things that the attacks of the enemy upon their person and their identity, and they're finding their courage and they're finding their voice. So I love what you said there about the lion lions arising, because I think that's the courage that we have in the person of Christ to know exactly how to step out in the living, breathing word of God and right. to it's be the catalyst that will change. Courage flowing through that's us. right. Exactly, Brenda. That's right. Yeah. And at the, that's, that's what's transforming, to be able to um, you know, face those things that I think typically in the Western culture we want to run from. He really does give us the courage to be able to face those things that oftentimes I think in our Western culture, we want to run from, you know, we, we have a tendency to want to live more in denial or run from the things that we're afraid of. And we, we don't know how to address those things scripturally. And so oftentimes we can find ourselves kind of floating in a twilight zone of projection and performance and we're doing our best. But I think in this time of shaking on the earth, um, it's an opportunity for us and, and we're stepping into a place of authenticity and a it place is, where, an opportunity. Uh-huh. yes, totally. Which I brings saw, us back to being in the moment. Right. right. And I saw, I saw last night and then I'll tell you another story um, where Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk has a new group called Turning Point Faith and they're sending out young people to talk to all the pastors to, to get bold and to stand up. And some pastors won't discuss what's going on in the United States or around the world. They just, uh, you know, try to separate it, but you can't separate it anymore. It's so invasive. I mean, you know, they're shutting down churches and uh, Pastor Che On was so um, bold to come and, uh, you know, get that canceled over California. But somebody's mm-hmm. got to stand up. Wow. You can't just be... Uh, yeah. You know, Jesus would have turned over the tables a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about living in the moment, too. Is um, Yesterday I was at a lunch with a lady, and we were talking about, because I like to renovate shelters and as well as, you know, renovate the women. I want to renovate the places they live, because some of them are really sure. sharp. And yes. So I started a second 501c3 secular just to do that, get larger grants. And... Um, 
she was saying she'd come to church with us a couple of weeks ago and just cried at the altar. We thought, oh, for sure, she's born again. She's saved. Well, don't ever take anything yeah. for granted. She <laughs> sat there at lunch and she said, you know, I grew up as a Mormon and um, I had an abortion and I don't think God's ever going to forgive me. And I'm going, listen, oh, you've never asked wow. Jesus in your heart. He's going to forgive you and throw it into the sea of forgetfulness and remember mm -hmm. it no more. And whatever you have done, you know, he will forgive you. All you have to do is repent. Think again. Mm -hmm. If you've not asked Jesus in your heart. So right there in this fancy uh, luncheon place, I, I decided, you know, I could either do this now or I could wait two weeks. But, you know, what if she got in a car accident? I never saw her again. I grabbed her hand and we prayed the sinner's prayer. She got born again. She was so relieved. Mm -hmm. It was just amazing because it was a mm -hmm. kind of a fancy business place where you don't know who was there. But they were all minding their own business. And uh, it was just time to get somebody saved. So I think you're going to have yeah. encounters this year. You're going to have encounters with people. Yeah. And uh, don't ever take anything for granted. Just talk to them and let the Holy Ghost lead. Because it, it's time Amen. to be in the moment. Just seize carpe diem, as they say in Latin. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I agree. And I've had some myself that have been, they've blown my mind this year. Uh, and last year, I don't know if you realize, but I have been able to work with a, a treatment center in Montana and a sober living house there, helping also with some of the uh, refurbishing and decorating and some oh, of those things awesome. as well. So yeah. on many different levels and then speaking into the people and some of the alumni and sharing my book. And I honestly, some of the stories that I hear, they're, they're absolutely heartbreaking. And I, the compassion of Christ just, it, it so compels me to wrap my arms around them and show them that in him there is no condemnation and that there is hope for a new life and a new beginning. Uh, people struggle and they don't know how to get out of their pain and their addiction or whatever it is. So I'm grateful for ministries like yours that is uh, that are speaking into and seeing prophetically um, the hope of Christ for these different people that, that you encounter and just being that light that they need because, man, people are hurting out there. And they, they really are, do. They are, Brandon. You know how, how forward, I, I couldn't get into Santa Barbara to do anything. Um, so I figured, well, you know what? These people are so generous and they're such uh, great givers. I'm going to do an Arise 5K on the beach. We've got the beach, got beautiful weather. Nice. So in December, we had 220 people come out. And we raised over $30,000 for the local women's uh, shelter because they didn't have any windows uh, that closed. Yeah. They didn't have, uh, uh, I mean, it looked beautifully mm -hmm. outside, but if you go to the second floor, it's a three-story building. It was shabby on the inside. Looked wow. It looked good on the outside, but inside mm -hmm. it would be a little uh, TLC. You know, you're kind mm. of dang sin and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Getting windows that yeah. closed and uh, screens on the doors to avoid the flies and the bugs. That was a, a good uh, start. So that was yeah. really fun. And we're going to do that again this year. Engaging the community in something that was yeah. really fun. And, uh, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that, Mary. That's wonderful. Well, it's if you ever need any help with anything, yeah. please call me. Yeah. Well, listen, um, your parents have three grown adult children. We've got, you've got Angela, your oldest, correct? Your oldest daughter, David, your youngest. Is that right? And, right. and then Kat, Catherine Elizabeth, better known as Katy Perry, yeah. is your middle child. Right. And uh, you've written a book on, it's called Joyful Parent. And I'd like to know how did your, your journey of raising children and then the transition or the segue into being the uh, learning how to parent adult children who all have their own identities and their own ways of doing things. How did that influence your book? And, and what's your advice for parents out there, young and old? Well, I think, uh, you know, when they're young, you can do a lot with them, speak to them directly. But when they're old, yeah. you know, they think they have a mind of their own. So you're on your knees and uh, you're really <laughs> listening to the Holy Spirit to see what you do next. But yeah. one thing I found out is that you, you know, you're not, <clears throat> they might do things that you don't agree with and you're not fighting flesh and blood. You've got to keep in mind that you're fighting powers and principalities and rulers right. of this darkness. So you have to take authority over them instead of taking, getting mad at the personality, you know, because mm -hmm. you're always going to get uh, opportunities yeah. to 
uh, trip out, trip up and get mad at the person, but the person's not the problem. It's the enemy right. who's trying to cause the strife and division between you, and you just rise above it, just like a plane. You know, That's it takes good. off in an air, airport. It, it gets that thrust, and it gets up there, and the sun is always shining above the clouds. Just got to yeah. get up above those clouds. It's true. <laughs> Learning how to rise above the storms of this life and be in that place of peace. I think uh, I can be, I can relate quite a bit to this because I've got an adult daughter and three grandchildren and she's very strong willed. And, uh, you know, there's moments when she has to push back on mommy who's playing Holy Spirit Jr. Oh, and yeah. I think there's nothing better than just living your um, your witness and uh loving them right where they are. And, you know, I've seen that just bear so much fruit in her life and in our relationship. And I think, uh, it, now I would imagine your three children ha all have three different personalities as well. Is that true? Oh my God. That so, happened? <laughs> yeah. What are they? The same, the, sa the same product are the same two people, but they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I get that. And my three grandsons are all totally different. And it's quite funny to see uh, how those how those things work. But um, well, what's on the what's ahead for Arise and for you and Keith? What's ahead for you guys this year? What do you see happening in uh, 22? Well, I'm gonna do my conferences, I'm going to do Kauai March 24th through the 26th. It's ariseconferences.com is our website. And then we'll do one in Ventura. We haven't set the date. It's probably June or July. Then we do another one in Maui uh, in November. And each one of those, it's just amazing. The women that come, you will take mm. up to 40 women out of the shelters. And then everybody else comes, you know, probably have about 200. Wow. People. And uh, it's just growing every year because people love it. We just have great worship. And uh, it's just uh, it's just a great time in the Lord. Do you sponsor these women that you bring out of the shelters? Yeah. How does that work? Oh, wow. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Incredible. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And your speakers, I know you mentioned Tracy Strawberry is going to be there. Daryl, too, or just Tracy? Uh, just Tracy. Tracy, Joanne yeah. um, from Florida, and um, uh, a couple of girls from Hawaii, and myself, and then uh, Adriana Carrillo from San Jose, who's the mom of uh, Diamond Girls. She's got a real anointing for cancer and things yes. like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She's awesome. I love her. Yeah. Well, I, I, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, I met her a few years ago in uh, Stockton, California, and then met her again through you and a, a few years ago. And it, it's, uh, she's quite a dynamite person. Yeah. It's been a she's wonderful amazing. addition to your team. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, as I said, I really appreciate you, your friendship, your ministry, your heart, and uh, I know that uh, this is definitely a year that we're going to be more present in the moment. And I think that means that as we continue to awaken to the things of the Lord and be, as we bear his image, we're going to be more present to, um, to hear those cues, to see right, the people, right, those because cues, it's about so seeing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So important. seeing those who are oppressed. And I mean, that's what, what is it? Isaiah 61. That's what we've been when called to do, we've been appointed to do, and uh, we're qualified as uh, armor bearers, as, as those who carry the spirit of the Lord to bring healing to the broken and to, to heal the oppressed, to help set them free. And that's what it's all about. So that thank is, you. That is. And I think it's going to be an amazing year where, uh, <clears throat> unexpected things are going to just pop out of nowhere, like that mm. volcano came up out of Tonga and started a small tsunami on this Pacific coast. Yeah, There's going to be uh, things that happen that you have to be alert and you have to keep your eyes open. And, you know, like Jonathan yeah. Kahn says, this is a Shemitah year and anything could happen in September. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, and I was just here at the time that we're taping this in, you know, Colleyville, uh, which, where we have a place and uh, just 10 minutes from the terrorist uh, attack the other day oh, right. on the synagogue yeah. here. And it was uh, 
definitely heart wrenching. And so, you know, and I immediately went to prayer and called some friends of mine in the Jewish community. And I just really see all of these things that may feel initially as negatives to people as actually opportunities. The Lord is calling us to a deeper place, a more intimate place with him and a place of uh, being watchmen and having our eyes wide open and being available because uh, people are weary and they're hurting and uh, we can be the arms and feet, the hands of Jesus yes. to yes. them. I love being a blessing to Jewish people. And I mean, they say in the last days, the Orthodox Jews are the ones who are going to rise up and really be um, witnesses mm -hmm. for Jesus Christ. They'll become wow. messianic. Was there any last words you'd like to give an encouragement to folks today before we go? Well, I just, uh, you know, my book is Joyful Parent Equals a Happy Home. And if you're having trouble with your children or your teenagers, don't re realize that you're not dealing with flesh and blood. You're dealing yeah. with powers and principalities. And the worst thing you can do to the devil is laugh in his face. Because God says yeah. in Psalms 2, says that, you know, he that sits in the heavens to laugh in derision at his enemies because he knows the end result. And when you laugh at the enemy, it shows him that he's not really that important and he's not going to win. But if you declare and decree the word of God over your children, I've got scriptures for each one of my children and I declare, decree and declare it. And um, God brings it to pass. We decree, we declare, mm. and he does the multiplication. Amen. Well, I love you, friend. And yes, thank you thank for you so much for being with us today on Inside Voice. And uh, we will see you soon. Okay. Right. I'll we be calling you. Good. If anybody yeah. wants to go All right. on the website, it's ariseconferences.com. Yes. That's what I meant to ask you. Thanks for saying that. And so website is ariseconferences, ariseconferences with an S. Yes. Dot com. And can they find your books there as well and other resources? Uh, yes, but they're all on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you being here. It's an honor to have you. Well, my friends, I appreciate you being here today as well. And I know you have enjoyed this conversation with Mary and I. And I believe that in this year, you're going to experience exactly what she said. You're going to be present in the moment. And God is going to be with you to face every interval and to navigate the landmines and to understand what he's saying as he's saying it. I believe that you've been equipped to do all things through Christ who will strengthen you to do so. So I appreciate you. Thanks for being with us. Come again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.